What is up everybody and welcome back to the crack of pack series today We are opening up a pack of battle for Zendikar not the most exciting set in the world But there are some really good planeswalkers like Obnixilis as well as the Eldrazi themselves So hopefully we get something awesome. Of course, we're gonna look at this from a limited perspective So we will be picking our first round draft pick if we were actually drafting this set uh, hopefully uh, I do have a little bit of experience with this set, so hopefully we pick something a little bit uh, normal, uh, not crazy, uh, but we'll see. So we will go through every card, and our first one here is Dutiful Return. Three and a black for a sorcery return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. I believe we had this exact card in the Cons of Tarkir pack we opened uh, last week. I think is when this is going to go up. Uh, anyway, uh, I talked about that card then, but I do like cards like this. I don't like having too many of them, and I don't like first picking them by any means, but one copy of a card like this can mean the difference between your opponent removing all of your important bombs and you losing the game, or your opponent removing all your bombs, running out of removal, you returning your bombs, and you actually winning the game. So... I really like cards like this. Uh, you, If you play them at the right time, you can really, really close out a game quickly. So I do like this. Bring back your bombs is always good. Not first pick, though. Uh, Blister Pod is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green. It has Devoid, so technically it doesn't have a color. Uh, when it dies, you put a 1-1 one, one colorless Eldrazi Scion creature token onto the battlefield, and it has sacrificed this creature to add 1 mana to your mana pool, 1 generic mana. I uh, actually really like this card, it's just a one drop, uh, it's perfectly fine. Uh, it leaves something behind when it dies, which is always good. Uh, so it's extra value on a 1-1 one, one for 1. Can't be unhappy about that. It's not something I want to first pick by any means, but it is, you know, a decent card. Uh, Anticipate is 1 and a blue for an instant. Look at the top 3 cards of your library. You may put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom in any order. Uh, this is a perfectly fine card, it's definitely playable. Draw card or draw spells like this are not always like as high value and limited because yes they draw you cards so they're technically gaining you uh, some kind of advantage at the very least. Uh, in this case it's actually just replacing itself so it's technically not card advantage but you do get some selection there so it does help you. Uh, unfortunately that does take mana, that does take resources, and so you're not using those resources to affect the board which 90% of the time on board is where limited games are going to be one. Uh, Creature-based combat, things like that are really, really where limited games tend to be the focus on. And so Anticipate, while very good, I would definitely run it in a blue deck, is not really a card that I'm looking to first pick. It's one of those cards that if I'm in blue, I'm super happy to have it. If I'm not, this isn't a reason to be in blue, if that makes sense. So don't overvalue draw spells in limited. Uh, that tends to be a common mistake for new players, I find. Uh, and I've definitely been guilty of it too, but you will find if you're taking more higher value spells, not just draw spells to get you to your high value spells, uh, more times than not, you'll see a positive increase in your win rate. I, I won't say that's a hard fast rule because it's not, but in general, that seems to be the case. Uh, Sludge Crawler is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black. It also has Devoid. It also has Ingest, so whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles the top card of his or her library. Uh, you can also pay 2 and it gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. This is a much better 1-drop than Blister Pod, in my opinion. Yes, it the Blister Pod left behind another creature, but... This you actually have a little bit more late game value in that you can buff it up a little bit. And it's not super expensive to do that. Two mana of any color to buff it is kind of reasonable. It's not amazing, but uh, it does give you some long term value on a one drop creature. And there is sort of a black red aggressive deck uh, that was drafted in this, uh, in this set. And this card just seems like a really good one drop for that deck. So again, not necessarily first pickable, but definitely better than what we have so far. Uh, McKendy Patrol is a 2-3 for 2 and a white, and it has Rally, uh, which was a mechanic I believe specific to this set, though I might be wrong. Uh, whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control gain Vigilance until end of turn. Uh, sorry for the voice crack there. Uh, so this really focused you on the ally mechanic. I don't know how good the ally mechanic or the ally deck was because I never really drafted it. It didn't seem like the front runner in my mind. Uh, it's very specific. I mean, it's it's good. I feel like if you can get some of the key pieces, this not really being one of them. I think it's a solid card, uh, but I don't think it's a key piece to that deck by any means. Um, but ideally, you just kind of buff up a bunch of allies and do some really cool stuff, which seems really good. 
Uh, but you really have to get those key pieces. So I don't like investing in the, the ally deck personally. So I don't think I will be taking that. Uh, Nettle Drone is a 3-1 for 2 and a red. And it also has Devoid, so technically no color. You can tap it and it deals 1 damage to each opponent. And then whenever you cast a colorless spell, you untap it. Uh, I love cards like this. So this definitely beats out what we have so far. I love tappers that just ping the opponent. Uh, they're really, really powerful. If you can get even just a few activations off of it, it's really worth it. You can do it at the end of your opponent's turn, or you can do it with a card like this on your main phase, then cast another Devoid spell. And then all of a sudden this is untapped again. So you can block with it if you need to. You can still tap it down and deal some damage if you need to but it gives you some flexibility and still keeps you on the aggressive train. It also helps in board stall positions because you're still able to tap down and deal damage regardless of what the opponent does. It doesn't matter if they're attacking or blocking, you can still do this. So I really like a card like that. Uh, McKinney Slide Runner is a 2-1 for one and a red and it has Trample. It also has Landfall, which is an awesome mechanic, not specific to this set. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, the slide runner gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. This is just a really good aggressive card. Uh, it's not amazing, but it's definitely a solid two drop. Not beating out the uh, the nettle drone, uh, in my opinion, but it is very, very strong. Uh, they're, certainly that red-black aggressive deck is going to want a card like this. The nettle drone is a much more like kind of stally card. It's not necessarily uh, like it's going to deal damage early, so I guess you can run it in the aggressive deck but it's not necessarily focused on that, where this definitely is just play land, swing in, uh, deal as much damage as possible. So I like it, not amazing though. Uh, Smite the Monstrous, an instant for three and a white, destroy target creature with power four or greater. If you don't know, Eldrazi tend to have a lot of like just high power cards. Uh, obviously the ones that we're seeing at the common slot are not necessarily hugely powerful, but there are quite a number of them that have a lot of power greater than four. So. Uh, it's not uncommon in this set to see something with a very, very high power level. Uh, so destroying a target creature with power 4 or greater at instant speed for 4 mana, pretty good. Not amazing, but pretty good. Uh, it's definitely a little bit limited, but you would definitely run it if you were in a white deck, especially in this set. Uh, I think I still like the Nettle Drone better, uh, but Smite the Monster is not a bad card. Uh, Kuzlex Channeler is a 4-4 for 5 of any color. You can tap it and add 2 generic mana to your mana pool. I actually really like this card. So this allows you to do some really crazy stuff. Uh, ramping is always good. Having a 4-4 for 5 is like okay. It's okay value. Uh, if you notice, Smite the Monstrous does kill this. Uh, but uh, tapping for 2 generic mana in a set where a lot of colorless spells are going to be running around this is great. Uh, it does a lot. Eldrazi's tend to, co to cost a lot of mana, and so having something like this enables you to do a lot more high power things. So I do like this. I'm not sure if I like it more than Nettle Drone, but we'll keep it here for now. Uh, Vestige of, em of Emrakul is a 3-4 for 3 and a red. It's Devoid, and it also has Trample. Pretty straightforward card. I don't think it's amazing, but I don't really think it's bad either. It's a 3-4 for 4, which is like meh. But it does have tramples, so hopefully it's going to get through for some damage. Uh, it is Devoid, so it does play into that theme as well. I think it's okay. I don't think it's great. I don't think I like it over the other cards that we've got. Uh, Mirasa Ranger is a 3-3 for 3 and a green. It has landfall, so whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay 3 and a green, and if you do, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Ranger. This has a lot of upside. Uh, what I don't like about it is if they remove it, it's like just done. Uh, it does have the potential uh, for powering up and like being able to take over a game. But uh, the, the downside to cards like this is if you do invest a little bit of mana, they can kind of get you on that turn where like you pump it up, which is great. Uh, but then they just kill it after you've already pumped it up and spent that mana. So it's a little bit risky. Uh, it just, it can take you off of the game for a turn or something like that. And I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, I don't think that this card is bad though. I think it's actually quite good. I just don't know that I like it more than the other cards that we've got. I'm going to keep it here for now, but we'll see. Uh, Skyrider Elf is a 0-0 zero, zero for X, a green and a blue. It has flying and it also has converge. So when it enters the battlefield, uh, Oh, it enters the battlefield, excuse me, with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each color of mana that was spent to cast it. 
this is an interesting card. I don't know how good this is. Uh, I know with like a lot of like colorless stuff and things like that, you can kind of get away with doing uh, different like five mana builds or five color builds and things like that. Uh, I feel like this card is probably really good, but I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. Obviously, it's gonna get it's gonna be a two two flyer no matter what, uh, and so I feel like that's worth it. I think I like this honestly more than what we've already got. I might be wrong, but I'm gonna keep it here. Uh, Carrier Thrall is a two one for one and a black. When it dies, you put a one one Eldrazi Scion creature token onto the battlefield, and I sacrifice it. Add one mana to your mana pool. This is a really good aggressive card. It's a 2-1 for 2, and if it dies, it doesn't matter that much because you get the 1-1 behind it. Uh, and so it allows you to be a little bit more aggressive with your plays, kind of swing in when you not, you're not necessarily advantaged to in terms of board state. As long as it trades, it's good to go. So this is a perfectly fine card. I like the uh, Skyrider Elf a little bit more, but still pretty decent. And then our rare is Scatter to the Winds. So this is one and two blue for an instant counter target spell, classic cancel. Uh, Awaken three though, which was a brand new mechanic in this set. So four and two blue, if you cast it, if you cast it for the Awaken cost, you also put three one one counters on target land you control, and it becomes a zero zero elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. So cards like uh, the Awaken deck, so to speak, was really really powerful it was pretty sweet um basically it allowed you kind of out of nowhere to take over a game because you could awaken instant speed spells like this uh and then just start bashing out creatures so you're kind of two for oneing on all your spells uh really really powerful really really late game most of the time you kind of have to get to the late game and that's a little bit tricky i don't know how great this card is to be honest i never got the opportunity to play with this card specifically I don't know. I think I'd rather have the Skyrider Elf. I feel like it's a little bit more of just a solidly good card. That might be wrong. Uh, that could very, very easily be wrong. That is the last card. We did not get a foil. I don't know, guys. I'm going to say I would pick the Skyrider Elf. Uh, but again, please tell me in the comment section if you feel that's incorrect, because it very well might be. That just seems to be my pick. If uh, if you enjoyed this video, though, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.